which is an ultra, I call ultralight sail plant, unpowered ultralight. Uh, it started actually during the early years of hang gliding, 1972, 1973. We uh, heard of uh, you know, hang gliding in our area, so I drove up to the uh, National Dune State Park to watch them fly. And when I pulled into the park, I, I looked at the sand, side of the sand dune, and I counted 12 hang gliders being hauled up the side of the hill. It looked like butterflies being pasted on a side of a, a hill, hillside. <coughs> but what I saw in, in, in the, you know, the faces of those boys flying, men and boys, some, one boy was only 10 years old. And he had like a half-size hang glider, and he was flying. But their performance was very poor. In fact, they would just parallel the side of the, of the uh, sand dune coming down from uh, 150 feet up. But they sure had fun. So I thought I would like to try that. So the, uh, this was October. So all through that winter, I designed a, uh, a hang glider. And it was... Uh, uh, 32 foot wingspan, lots of wing area. Of course, it was a flying wing. And uh, I finished it by spring, and I waited all summer long for the right wind conditions. And it never came until September. And I took it out there and uh, carried it to the top of the hill. And by the time I got to the top of the hill, the wind quit. It was down to, well, maybe four miles an hour. Uh, at the bottom, there was no wind at all. So rather than chance flying in, in no wind on a, uh, to make a first flight, I, I decided not to do that. But there was a little knob on top of this dune, about 15 feet high. And it was a flat area in front of that. And I would run off of that, and I could get it to fly. So I, I would fly about 100, 150 feet. So I did that three times. And that was, uh, then the wind completely quit. So we took it downhill, took it back home, and had it in its trailer, parked out in the back backyard. Well, next spring I got it out, and I discovered the mice had gotten into it, and it was, it was all eaten up. Fabric was eaten through; the ribs were all eaten up. So that that ended that. And uh, over the winter, I was thinking about all the times I could not go flying because of the weather conditions. So what I needed was something that was between a hang glider and a sailplane. Sailplanes can be towed in any kind of uh, direct wind, and no wind at all, or winds up to, to 20 miles an hour, which covers about 80% of the time. So that's why I, I try to design an, a glider that's halfway between the two. And what I came up with was the Monarch. So I, s I spent about uh, six, eight months building it over over winter, and uh, in the spring it was ready for test flying. It's probably late spring, and so we did some car tows down the runway with it. Uh, I had to make a few changes on it, then make it more. Uh, well, easier to handle. I mean, it, I mean the biggest thing, the improvement was it had a wheel to the bottom instead of just a skid. So it dr had, to, had to drag it around prior to that. The wheel was a great invention. And I bet you I made 500 flights on that prototype glider. And I had a lot of uh, good soaring flights, too. We uh, went uh, hooked up to a Piper Cub. A friend of mine had one, and so we would pull it out at 45 miles an hour, and I would uh, catch a thermal and go up to five, six thousand feet, and then stay up for two, three hours at a time. So that was uh, a good machine. Of course, in the meantime, I was thinking about other ways of making changes on it and make it more efficient.